This next part I'm just going to spend a minute on, but I was just going to tell you like about binders. It's pretty much listed here under on the second page where it says binders. And like I said, to those of you that have huge clubs, this is really going to come in handy. Those of you that have smaller clubs, maybe not yet, but just keep it in the back of your mind as your club grows. But um, the one thing I purchased was an original binder, and I already kind of showed you that, but this right here is all my originals in this book. What makes it very nice, it's, it's heavy. What makes it really nice is when you're getting ready for a new year of Adventure Club, you're not going through a million files. Oh, do I need this? Oh, do I need this? No, I have this when I go to the copy room. Well, I update all my forms. Like I'll sit at my computer at home. I'll put my new updated one, my new schedule in there. Then I'll go to the next page. I'll look at everything that needs a date change, a letter to the class counselors. I'll read it. Do I want to make any changes? I'll print a new one off. I'll stick it in here. Everything I go through and I make any changes on any form that I'm going to make. And then I take it to the church with me and I plan on spending a few hours there <laughs> making lots of copies. And then you just go from page to page. Okay, I've got 70 kids. I've got eight kids. I'm going to make that many schedules. And then, you know, for each, each thing I come to, that's what I do. And then it, it keeps it nice and you always have it. And I always take it with me every week because you never know when something weird is going to happen and somebody's going to need another copy of something. And I just found it so much better when it was in a binder and it was organized because it really makes it a lot easier at the very beginning of the, of the year especially. So that's my original binder. And then what I would do is, and you can read down it to see the kind of things that I, I put in it. You can put whatever you want in yours, but this is just a, a guideline um, of what I, what I found helped me. And then this was my personal binder right here. And I had one of these for every year. It just said Linda's, the year, and that. And this was, this was my lifesaver. And what I found that this is coming, even though I'm not a director anymore, being a coordinator, when people call me, well, how much did that cost? Or what did you do about that? I just pull this out, and I can tell you exactly what I paid for something, exactly where we went, what the list looked like, what the sign-up thing. And it, it, it's nice. It keeps everything really organized for you. And once again, these were the tabs um, that I used. You know, you can read down those. And uh, but that was my way of keeping myself organized and having a way to keep up with my budget, my class schedule, my staff list, my club roster, the budget, the deposits emails I sent to the church secretary and the church bulletin information, emails to the church newsletters, emails and letters to staff, emails and letters to parents and miscellaneous people, activity flyers, announcements, award signups, award order information, my fundraiser information, my pres presidential fitness award information, the award bonanza information, and what award bonanza is, at the very end of the year, when everything's done, we would have one night or maybe two nights that we would do um, award bonanza and let the kids pick a different award that they wanted to do. And they loved that. That was a lot of fun. And then all my Adventure Club Sabbath um, information, all my investiture information, and all my miscellaneous information was all in there. I just bought these little tabs because, you know, and I would put it like that right on my tab. But what I found out, when you put it in plastic, it covers up your tabs. So then you just buy these little, you need these little 3D, 3M things and stick on them. And you get so you use the book so much, you know, right where everything is. You know exactly what you're looking for. But it kind of helps you. It just keeps it organized, and I like that. So for your original book, I gave you my ideas, but you can also put your own. That's my ideas for my book, but you, you, you also could do your own. And then the one thing that I found to be really helpful was I bought a one-inch binder, labeled it the same way, and it was my conference, what I call it. Well, well, I did one for them too, but this one was my applications, the health record, the image release forms, all in a binder. So I would take and I would put, I would take a bright yellow piece of paper and I would type Busy Bee on it, print it off on my computer, and put that and then I would put all the Busy Bee applications behind that. Did the same for Sunbeams, the same for Builder, the same for Helping Hands. And then I would take one and I would put um, 
image release forms and I would keep a cop because remember you have to you want your um, registration at registration they have to do the health form and the image release form and you need to send the original image release form to the conference office and keep a copy for yourself so what I would do is I would put that uh, one section for all my image release forms and then I'd make another colored thing and put all my health records behind it and I took that everywhere I went you bring that to Venture Club every week you take it especially on all outside activities because if somebody got hurt their parents are supposed to be there but you never know what could happen and so you want to have their health records with you yes could you scan those and have them on your phone for example or do you have to have the paper copy with you? <coughs> I guess you could scan them. I, I mean, you could. I guess I don't. I don't. I don't know about that one. Well, you could. Sometimes you, we do hikes and stuff, and you're carrying all this right. stuff. Right. Yeah. Them, oh, yeah. I didn't carry it on hikes and, with you know, me. Right. Like that, or something were to happen. Yeah. Could, you know, I, was just I would that. ask. I would ask Fernando about that because you're, it's people's medical records you're putting on your personal phone. So I probably might would ask that question before I did that, because um, yeah. That would be the only thing is that then, you know, something like that. I would probably check that one out. If that's okay, that's, you know, that would be a good idea. But I might would ask about that one since it's, it's medical. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's true, too, if the parents don't care. Well, yeah. Something yeah, because you're, yeah. because you're part. I would definitely ask Fernando that one, though, because HIPAA violations, there's quite a few HIPAA violations, and that's somebody's medical information that you're putting on your personal phone. So I don't know about that one. I would ask about that before I did it. Just, I work in the medical field, and there's so many HIPAA stuff that... So I know HIPAA. Yeah. My phone is encrypted. Yeah. So I don't know. I can look. Yeah. But um, anyhow, and that binder, just like I don't carry it with me on a hike. I leave it back at camp, you know, but just so that you have it if, if you need it. It's something good. And then I had one more binder I would set up, one more one-inch binder, and it was my conference binder. And you can see the list of things I would have in there, any correspondence I had with the conference, the registering stuff, all of my just different items that you would, you know, copies of things you get from the conference, things you may want to send them, and just things like that. It, I just found it a way to keep everything organized and it was all in one place and I didn't have to search for it. Another thing I did, if you look at the page that says file boxes, I had a, 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 a uh, just one of those plastic boxes I bought with a lid and when I would go to the church, oh this is, anybody that put your email on here, I'll send you an email with all my attachments on. Um, I would take that box with me to the church and I had hanging files in it. You know, you can buy them with the hangers on. And I would have, you know, tabs and folders of what each thing was. And as I would go to the, the copy room in the church and I would make my copies like my registration form, I would put everything in that box. I had one that was called a registration box. Everything I copied that was for registration would go in the folder in that box. Then when I went to registration, I just had to pick that box up. Everything was ready for me. My table signs were all ready for me. All of my handouts to the parents, all the sheets that I had for people to sign up to teach honors, everything was in there, all ready to go. And I found that to be really helpful. Um, but that's just a, a note, a list of things that I had in there. And then I kept what I called a book material little file. It was a lot smaller. The registration box was like this. But the little book file one was about like this. And it was another little hanging one. And any inserts that I would make that I was going to put in the kids' books, I would just put in those hanging files. Then when I made books up, you just reach in. The ones for Sunbeam, the ones for Busy Bees, it, it's all there. It's, and the ones that you don't use because you always end up running extra stuff because you never know when new kids are going to join. What do you do with that stuff? It gets all bent up and messed up. So put it in your little file box. And then what you don't use this year, it's there for you for next year. And then I had one other box. It was called my... my um, that was my carry-along box. And it just had odds and ends in that um, it had a handle on it, and it was just, you know, one of those little file ones. I would take things in it like my reserve signs, extra shield things that if we had a new person come on board and I wanted to give them that, 
extra class attendant sheets, extra um, awards for um, each of the divisions. Um, the, what, when I say busy bee checklist for parents and that, I'll show you that in a minute what that is, but I would have extra one of those because I always gave the class counselors plenty of those in the books that I made for them every year. But sometimes they ran out and I didn't want them to have to be burdened with making copies. So I would have extra and they would just come to me and I'd reach in my little box, hand it to them and, and everybody was happy. Um, the things about the presidential fitness, my activity sign-up sheets that I was going to use that night for sign-up for, you know, the coming activity, and just extra things like that. I just found it a good way to keep my things separate and things organized and just a way to keep things nice because you know how papers are. If you just, if I had all these papers just in a pile, I can't even imagine digging through that and how bent up they would be and dirty they would get. And same for your extra things that you've copied. You know, you want some way to keep it organized so you have your boxes for each thing and it, it makes it so easy for you at registration. You know, I would just carry that box from table to table. And this is what our registration looked like when we set up for it. We would just have a main table when you walked in that had all the different applications on. Now, we had different applications for each group. Like we had one with Busy Bee and their little signature thing on and Sunbeams. You don't have to do that. You can go on the conference website. There's a nice registration form. You can use it for all of the, the you know, each division. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, one for each. That's just something we we always did, but it's it's not 100% necessary. Their form works very nice too. And Carl and I would always sit at this table and pass the stuff out. And another thing we would have, this checkoff list for the parents. They come in, we hand them their form. We hand them this checkoff list, and what the checkoff list did, it told them what table to go to. They go to the registration table, and then they go sit down here. They sit down here at those tables. They fill out their applications, have supplies, have everything marked well with signs so they know, you know, where they're going. They would go sit down there. They would fill out their, regi their registration forms, and then all these tables you see going around. The green was the eager beaver. The yellow was a busy bee. On those tables, I would have all the papers for the, the parents that they would need at registration. Not the kids' books yet, just certain registration information. And then I would have a list of all the honors that were going to be taught with the, the date they were going to be taught on and a line for parents to sign up because parents need to help. You know, like mm -hmm. that one lady was saying, no parents ever signed up. So they would literally could sign up and then I would take, I had one of these books that you cut the spine off and then I would make copies of whatever that, whatever went for that honor, I would have that copied with the date of that honor on and when they would sign up, they just picked that up and they had all the paperwork they needed to do the honor because if you have the stuff there for them and they can look at it and say, oh, this isn't so bad, I think I can do this. And then, you know, the class counselors also pushed them a little bit to help and to do some honors. Then in the back corner here, that's where our um, treasurer sat and took up the money. And then we had this section where we had all of our uniforms. We had a couple people sitting back there and we had special forms for them to fill out for uniforms so that the uniform person could keep track of who had uniforms. We put the number with a, a washable pin, you know, one that won't wash out. We'd number the uniforms so we know who had what uniform. And that's how you keep from losing them because they're not cheap. And then on this side of the room, we would have tables for the other things. You know, each year in the book, the kids start that Bible chart. And it goes, you know, they start in busy bees and then each year they go farther, farther, farther. By the time they're helping hands, they're working on Jesus' second coming pictures. So we would hang all those up, you know, the kids kind of get excited. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that again. So that was pretty much our registration. And then we had a snack table because when they went around and got all this checked off, guess what? They got a snack when they brought this to the snack table. So that was always a fun thing. They liked, they liked that a lot. And, um, yeah, and then, of course, they liked to run around the middle of the floor and play because that's, that's their favorite thing to do. Um, another thing I was going to cover with you is the worship. Some people say, well, what do you do about worship? Well, we would, whatever the theme was, we'd have a board, you know, some kind of thing if we were going to go with a theme that year. But we found trying different things, going in rooms for worship, doing this, doing that. 
We found what the kids loved the best was sitting on the floor. They didn't really like sitting in chairs. Yes, did you have a question? Yeah, I just had a question about your registration. What's the benefit of doing it separate instead of the, the conference registration form? Is there a benefit of? Oh, no, there's no benefit. No, at all. No, I mean, it's just, that's just the way they'd always done it, and we just kept on doing it like that, but there's no benefit to it. But you still want to have individual tables set up because they got to go to their table to pick up their, um, you know, to sign up for awards, for parents to sign up and to meet the counselors. And also, that's where I would put these, the, the yearly schedule. So they had to go to their table to pick this up because you want to encourage the counselors, really strongly encourage the parents to sign up because they didn't want to have to teach all the honors themselves. So that's why that was kind of a way to get the parents to their tables and, you know. So anyhow, yeah. At the beginning, mm -hmm. and the parents would just sit around the corners on the benches. We didn't make them sit on the floor, but the kids loved sitting on the floor. That was their, they didn't like it when we had it in rooms or had it in the church. They wanted to sit on the floor and do it. So, and it's good to involve the, the academy kids. Um, they like to come help with the music. So you can always keep that in mind too, that you can get them to come do music. And that just kind of shows you how they would all just sing and have a lot of fun. And then they would line up between their flags, there's an eager beaver flag, they would line up, and then we had flags for each group, and they would just line up in a, a, a big OU all the way around the gym between their flags with their counselors, and we would um, do the pledge and the law and have different kids come up and hold the, you know, hold the Bible, hold the, the you know, all the different things that you do in your pledge and law. They would come up and do that, and, um, then, then they would sit down. Let's see if I have one of them sitting down. We would have them sit down on the floor. Well, that, that's our group picture. But we'd have them sit down on the floor between their flags after we did the Pledge of Allegiance and all that. And um, that's when the awards officer would come up and call them up and give them their, their little patches. And that was what our, that's how we did our worships. And this was our group picture that year of, um, you know, that we did. So that was kind of a fun thing. But... Um, Anyhow, then the other thing for your, um, your, your class counselor book, that was another binder. That depends on what you want to do, but I would give my class counselors a binder every year, and in the binder I would put some things like, um, This is what, this, these were the class checklists I was telling you about. I made these, I would put some of these in the class counselor's binders because you know how kids miss and then they start getting behind? So this had every page in the book that would be covered and um, they would just, they could, what the class counselor could do, they, these were, we co copied them on whatever color paper was for that class, yellow, you know, just so they'd be bright, orange. And then the class counselor could just check off what the child was behind on and they would send it home to with the parents, with the child to the parents. And then the parent could help their child if they'd been out for a couple weeks sick. They would know exactly what pages in the book to look at and what to do to get their child caught up. Those came in real handy. Um, the parents liked that because then they could, you know, know what their child needed. And then um, class attendance sheets. I just made these up for the, to make it easier for my class counselors. It was just something as simple as um, their name and I would put in each block, I would put the date of the meeting. And so all the class counselor I had to do then was fill the names in and then just check off the blocks. Because if they wanted, we had a perfect attendance pin we'd give at the end of the year. And there were kids that got it and they worked hard to get it to make sure they were there. But you have to have some way for them to keep track. And I would run that on cardstock, just in whatever color um, their class color was, um, one of the, you know. And uh, that worked real nice for them. And like I said, the little things that you can do for your class counselors, it's more work for you, but it, it makes people more willing to come be class counselor. If you just say, oh, I don't care how you keep record, just do it. They might be like, oh, I don't know how to do that. How am I going to do that? So if you can give them a nice binder, and you can have the yearly schedule in it, the staff contact list, the class counselor letter, a parent, the, pe the letter that you're going to give to the parents, a copy of that, the welcome letter to the adventurers, and just, 
you know, all those kind of things that you want to give them. I, I had extra award cards in there so that they didn't have to make their own. Um, I had sticker sheets for what I did is like I would run on the little 3D, oh, you know, just the real little tiny stickers. I would type the name of the awards and I would run a whole sheet of that for each award they taught. Like for Busy Bee, I would run it for um, Bible One Award. It would say Bible One all the way down the sheet. And I would put that in the class counselor's book in a plastic sheet so that when they filled out those little cards, all they had to do is write the, kid, the child's name on it and then pull one of those Bible warts, put it on there. It saved them time. Like I said, anything you can do to make their job easier will make them more likely want to stay on and help. So, you know, just simple little things like, like that and, you know, um, what else was in there? Oh, I put a pencil bag in it, and I would put a black pen and a red pen, and that's where I would stick the award cards, and I'd stick them some rubber bands, and then sometimes I would put one of those sheets of the little reinforced things, mm -hmm. the little whole thing, so that if somebody's book tour, somebody's page tour, they could repair it for them, and just little things like that, and, you know, so they, they seem to like that. And then um, another thing, the class checklist. I made these up because that's not what I was wanting to show you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. What the word record? Maybe that's. Okay, these, I went through for every required honor in all four years, I went through and made one of these sheets up for each one of them. And what it is, it would be a place for them to write where the date began, when the date was completed, and who the instructor was and a brief summary of everything that was required for that, that, award, that honor. And then down here, the date the honor, the award was earned, because that way, and then the date we gave them the patch. And what was nice about that, all they had to do is fill in the child's name. And you know, if you have a child, like I said, when you have 22, that group we had all the way through, they were 22. So, They'd have to have a couple of these sheets, but you're always going to have one or two children that are missing when you have 22 kids and busy bees. And so, you know, suppose you get this much done this night, and so you've got three kids that are missing. Well, you just don't check their blocks off those nights, and then you know exactly what they're missing. And then, um, you know, the next night you do whatever. You, you always have record of everything that everybody's completed, and the people that don't have check marks you know that they've not completed that, and then you can pull that other sheet I just showed you, check off the box and send that home with them so the parents can help them complete it. And then you know the ones that did earn those awards, you know that they've earned it because you've got a date there, and when you look here, you think, oh, I wonder why they haven't earned it. You just look up and whatever isn't checked. And I found that really helpful, especially when you have a lot of kids in each class. The class counselors like that because it just gave them a way to track it. And that is one of the things that I'll be, I'll be glad to share with you. And another thing that I did that helped me a lot was um, the counselor's checklist. The first year I was a class counselor, I thought, well, they don't even have a way of tracking anything. I've got 22 kids, and how am I supposed to track when this person's not here, that's what drove me my first year as being director to make these sheets up. What I did with this, this is everything in this book right here and what page it's on and what the activity is the entire way down. It's everything for, there's actually two, two pages of it. So that other sheet that I just had up, you know, for that individual award, if when those children would complete that award, then I would go to this sheet right here, okay, the Busy Bee Award for the reading, it's complete. So I know that there's nothing missing. But if I went down to one of these and Bible One Award, Matthew, Jared, Jonathan, they're all complete. But I wonder why Gabrielle is not complete. Okay, let's see, Mary, Mary Lou, Sally, Joe, they're all done. But how come Gabriella didn't finish, you know? Okay, this is my quick reference sheet. How come Gabriella's name isn't checked off? All right, that's the Bible One Award. So I look at my Bible One sheet. Oh, because she's missed this one, this one, and this one. 
pull out my check sheet, check it off, send it home with Gabriella and say, can you finish this up at home? Take it to Gabriella's mom. This is what Gabriella needs to finish up. She brings it back to me. I go to that other sheet. I check it off, write what date her award, turn her award card in, and then come to this, check it off. Then when I'm getting ready for investiture, this is what I'm not digging through 50 million pieces of paper to figure, oh, what are they missing? I'm looking at this. Okay, who doesn't have a block filled out? Okay, oh, Matthew, he's missing a block right here on say, okay, let's say Matthew's missing a block on safety specialist. Okay, I wonder why he didn't receive his honor, his award. Well, I go to my safety specialist one, which, does it make, do you understand what I'm talking about or am I not making sense? Okay, I go to that sheet, I look, oh, he missed number four, six, and eight. Pull out my other sheet, check four, six, and eight off, send that home with mom and dad, he brings it back, I check off my list, check off here, and then when my year is about complete, he, nobody's missing anything, it's, it's a really easy system. And if you, if you have a lot of kids, it's a really nice system. If you don't have a lot of kids, then maybe you know you don't really need that. But anyhow, that's just some of the things that for that. Um, from my kids' books, we did a lot of different things. We tried. We for a while we would cut the spines off. We we divide them with dividers. We put them in three ring binders. That's a lot of work. That we we got over that real fast. What we found the best thing to do. We started buying these. If you go right when school starts, you can get these for a few cents a piece. And I would, I would take um, a sticker, just like this. I would type all the kids' names up, and I would put a sticker right here on their folder. And then I would put the name sticker right here. And I would stick this in here. And then any information I wanted the parents to have, like my dear parent letter, so they would understand, you know, how our system worked, would go right next to it. And then that's what they, they would bring to class every week. Some people don't send it home, but we did because if they miss, they've got to make some things up at home because you're probably not going to have time in class to make up something with everybody every week when you have children out, you know, frequently. So that's how we did it. There were years that we bought the ones like this that had the, you know, the tabs where you put the letter in so they don't lose them. But I don't know, these just seemed to work the best. So that's what we did. And we just kind of did the colors according to their class and the kids liked it. And it was a good way when they left their books that they, they didn't, you know, their sticker was on it. You know exactly whose book it was. So that's how we did the kids book and what I would put in for the parents, I would put um, in the side pocket a parent letter, a yearly schedule, and that's all on my thing here. The staff contact list, the reading list, and the adventure song. Because there is that, that there are a few things that as much as you hate to send things home with them, there are a few things that they do have to do at home. Um, and those are the reading award, that has to be done at home and using your story chart and your booklet to show somebody how much Jesus cares for you and the power in your life, which is your quiet time with Jesus. Those are the three things that we sent home with them. Um, so, and then the Eager Beaver book, there really wasn't an Eager Beaver book. So this is what, what I used for Eager Beaver. And that's also, I'll be glad to share this with anybody who wants it. Um, this is a whole folder that says Eager Beaver information. And you know how this just pretty much told what the memory work was and the different skill things that they had to do. And then um, you know how they have to, like their little reading thing they have to do. They have to read a story like that. I made these little forms up and, and they had a little book. And then the parents, when they complete it, they would just sign it. And there's a number of other ones, like where they make a card and take it to an elderly person, and they draw a little picture, and then their parents would sign it. And all of these I'll be happy to share with anybody who wants to use any of these. So um, anyhow, but that's just how we did the, the children's books. And um, let's see. Oh, mission outreach. That's kind of something that's good if you can get kids interested in mission outreach early. Um, we did different things. One year we had one of the dads that was deployed over to, um, deployed over to Afghanistan. 
So we, kids, we brought candy and all kinds of stuff and sent it to them. And we made an adventure club card and all the kids signed it and we laminated it. And they thought that was pretty fun. And then when he came back, he brought a box of flags that he had taken each of these little flags and he had literally flown them in Afghanistan a couple of day, rolled them back up. And then when he came back, he gave each of the kids this little flag thing that he actually had flown in Afghanistan and personally shook their hand and thanked them for thinking of him and for praying for him. And so they thought that was really neat. Um, some years you can do a Christmas shoe box, um, a VBS mission trip supplies. We did that one year when our, trip, our church was going on a mission trip. We asked what kind of things that they would need and the kids brought hats and gloves and just different things that the, then they packed them all up and they took them on their mission trip. Um, a community service cleanup project, a church cleanup project, or a school cleanup project, or any offset, um, offsite basically activity. Um, if you're interested in knowing how to do the theme, I'm gonna teach a seminar at 3.30 today downstairs and then at 4.30, no, at 3 o'clock downstairs and then the same seminar at 4.30 in this actual room. Yeah, right in here, yeah. So, and anyhow, I've got a lot of neat crafty stuff I made and a lot of stuff, if you're interested in any of that, pass that out for you and different things that you can get ideas on. Oh, pictures, pictures, and more pictures. That's the big thing. And you know what else I learned? Take your own pictures. <laughs> because <laughs> one year, my first year of being director, one of the dads says, oh, I'll be your photographer. And I said, okay. Well, yeah, he was the photographer, but he never came to half of the stuff. So what happened there is, guess what? When it came time for him to do the slideshow, it was more trouble for me to go through all my pictures, put them on a thing for him, and give him the pictures to incorporate with the ones he had taken than it was for me to do it myself. So I learned right then and there, take your own pictures because you're at everything. You know, and you can kind of keep in mind, you know, or you may see something, oh, that would look really neat in my slideshow and do your own slideshow. Then you kind of have the freedom of, plus it's fun and you can kind of do it the way you want to do it. But yeah, I would take a lot of pictures because you want everybody's kids in them. And if you, if you have somebody else taking your pictures, like I said, they may or may not come through for you. Um, Adventure Club Sabbath, we talked a little bit about that already, about how we had the kids do the bulletins and the offering and the prayer and the scriptures and all of that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about investiture, then I'm going to show you kind of a combined thing that you could use for either, either one. But for investiture... Um, what we did is we practiced, and you know, it's, if, if kids know, oh, there's no, there's no awards tonight, eh, I don't want to go practice, I'm not going to go, you know, our parents are like, oh, I'm not going to go over there, because they're just going to practice anyhow, you know how it is. So what we started doing is we developed a way to make them really want to come by having what we call a scavenger hunt. And it was always, you know, in the springtime around Easter, and you could go to Walmart and buy the eggs that are all full of candy. And because um, you're going to send them home with their parents after they eat the candy, you're not taking them home with you. But, but anyhow, so what we would do is we would buy tons of these eggs and we would put them in these bags. And then we would buy little bags for the kids. And that was the reward for hurrying up and practicing and getting it done fast. And the dads would stay, when the kids went over to the church to practice, the dads would stay and they would go out in the field and they would hide eggs all over the church area and the grass and the trees. And so, boy, the kids loved it. They would be so excited while you were practicing. They would cooperate really well and they would do everything you asked. And they, Miss Lynn, is it time to go? Yeah, almost, almost. And so then we'd all go back to the gym and then we'd kind of let the little ones go out first and then a minute couple minutes later we'd let the older ones go out and we would tell them okay you can each pick up 10 eggs and so they would do that and then they'd go over to the pavilion they'd count their eggs and then um, you know we knew there were still more eggs out there so when everybody had their 10 eggs then we'd say okay everybody can go back out and just pick up whatever else you find that was a huge thing they loved it and we never had any trouble getting people to come to investiture practice again once we started doing that so there's a lot of little tricks you can do and when you're getting ready for your investiture, like I mentioned earlier, with these sheets, you know, where you have these, um, where you have these stickers, 
At the beginning of the year, I would type the kids' names up and run these off to put on my books right here. And it comes for you know two purposes. Then at investiture, I already had these done, so then I would just run myself another list and I would buy these little bags. I bought these at Hobby Lobby. And what I would do is I would take their name sticker and I would put it right here. And then I would put all their investiture pins in here. You can put, if you want to, you can buy the smaller bags too. And you can put the investiture pins in here and then um, put it in here. But the reason I started going with this side's bags is that last night when you pass out those last honors, some oh, awards. My husband told me I keep calling them honors. He said I've called them more honors than awards. Sorry, I do Pathfinders. It's a little confusing. You don't get used to saying that all the time. But anyhow, um, what I would do is I use the bigger bags because the honor, the award cards fit perfect in here. So the kids who had missed anything to pick up, I would just stick it in here too, then seal it up, had their name on, and then pass the whole thing out to them at investiture. And then I would take these and I would paper clip them, all the busy bees together, all the sunbeams together, and I would lay them on a table, which you'll see in the, sh the slides I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then it would be real easy when, you know, when your counselors would come up and then you would be picking that up and you would be the one calling the kids' names. You just had to look at these and then hand them to the counselors and they would hand them to the kids. And we would encourage the kids not to open them until they were with their parents because you could always find patches and pins all over the floor after investiture. So that was just a couple of things. Um, and also what I did is I always wanted my staff to know how much I appreciated them because without your staff, you couldn't do it, you know. I mean, you know, as you said, it's very difficult when it's just you and, and your spouse that's doing it. So I would do something that was, you know, it wasn't real expensive, but I would maybe buy one of those, you know, the cellophane bags that you can buy that are, and I would buy some of that kind of, um, you know, something to stuff in it, maybe, you know, that shredded paper. And then I would go to Bath and Body and maybe get a little hand sanitizer or hand lotion. And, or maybe you can find some little fancy pads of paper, you know, for the men that don't want hand sanitizer. And everybody likes candy, so I would buy some, you know, really good kind of candy and stick some of that in. And then I would hand write them a personal thank you note to let them know how much I appreciated all their effort and everything and how much it meant to me to have them on my staff. And, you know, and then I would put all that in and tie it with a really pretty bow. And, you know, it was very inexpensive, but it meant a lot to them because it is a lot of work being a counselor too, you know? And so, I don't know, it just really, it made them feel, they enjoyed that a lot. Um, and then I would do bulletins, and I always color coded them, because kids like to see their colors on everything. And so, I would do that, and I would just put like the, you know, the emblem, which of course you guys know this is changing, right? Mm -hmm. And that it's gonna be, you know, you, and like, this one right here, yeah. This is the one, there's a new one. It has like two people, angels, like over a Bible. And there's five years that you have to change those out. So if you're gonna buy these for your club, buy the new one. They'll be available, they were supposed to be available August at Advent Source, so ask, you know. And this one, and now it's September one? Oh, well, September 1st, which is real soon, but yeah. This one right here, I'm not sure if this is going to, I think that this one even may change and maybe have all six of the showing, you know, the little lambs and eager beavers. I don't know about that for sure yet, but I do know that this one's going to change. So I'm sure there'll be a new CD because you can buy a CD from Advent Source that gives you all of these um, logos. But we would just do this and then on, on one side I would just, um, I would have all my, a thank you to my staff and I would list all their names and what their job was. And then I would also thank the church secretary, the church treasurer, and our audiovisual man um, at our church. Always, I would always give them a little gift too to thank them because you know the church secretary she helps you out a lot. She, you know, gets your room scheduled for you and looks out for you. And the church treasurer cuts your checks. And our, the man that does all our media stuff he works hard coming to our practices. And I just wanted them to know that we really appreciated it. You know. And then I also thanked the parents for bringing their kids. And then I would do our little program on this side. 
just the things we were going to do. And then in the back, just put the Adventure Club song and, uh, you know, and then I would put something on the bottom about next year when, when registration was going to be and stuff like that. So anyhow, that was kind of um, what I did for investiture. And one other thing before I show you that slideshow, you can get really cute paper to send, you know, your, your staff little notes on sometimes. At the beginning of the year especially, I would try to, you know, send them a little note thanking them so much for being on my staff and letting them know um, how many kids had signed up for their unit and what room that we were going to put them in in the gym and, you know, just to let me know anything they needed, but just to let them know that I was thinking of them and that I appreciated them. And another thing I always did too is your staff list where you have, you know, that you give the parents that has the director's contact information, all the counselor's contact information. That's really important too, to make sure you do, to, you do that. And the big thing is make a venture club fun so that the kids will want to come. Because keep in mind that many of them are homeschooled. In fact, out of, my, out of the all nine kids I have in Pathfinders this year, only one goes to school. They're all homeschooled. And the one that goes to school, this is her first year she's, you know, to ever go to school. She's been homeschooled up to this point. But you, gotta, you have to keep in mind that a lot of kids that come to Venture Club have been in school for seven hours, and they've been having to sit and be quiet. They don't want a Venture Club to be like school. Make it fun. Make the crafts fun. Make it fun, you know, that they'll want to come. And the biggest thing that we found, their funnest part, the thing they looked forward to, was when Adventure Club was over every Wednesday night, they had playtime in the gym. We never shut the lights off. We let them stay till, well, it was over at 7.30, and they normally stayed till what, about quarter of 8, 8 o'clock. Parents loved it. Sometimes it was after 8, but, but the parents would stand there and talk and get to know each other. The kids would run and play with the basketballs or just run and play. That was the biggest builder for the club because the people got to know each other and the kids loved it. They, some of them would say, well, I don't really like doing the paperwork, but I love the playing. So keep that in mind. Make it fun so they want to come. And keep in mind, too, that the biggest reason we're there is to get these kids' hearts ready for Jesus to come. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I turn on the news and I see the signs like I have never seen them before, taking place. I really think the Lord's getting ready to come and he's wanting to use all of us because he loves these children and he wants them to be ready to meet him. And so I feel like now more than ever, we're competing against TV, video games, so many things that we just need the Lord's help to help get us, help us to get his children ready to meet him. So I want to show you one more thing here. Um, Oh man, I got so much stuff open. Okay. All right, this is. Why is it moving to that, Clara? Yeah, it's not letting me go to my slideshows. Oh, there it goes. Okay. This is, I'll just kind of show you, this is kind of how we, we've got 10 minutes, so let me just shut the lights and show you this. Then I want to have a few minutes for you to ask me any questions you have. I won't turn the music on because I can kind of show you things here. Well, I guess the music's on whether I want it on or not. <laughs> oh, it's okay, I'm not going to plug in it. What? How did I lose my signal again? Hold on. Huh. Well, see if you can get it. Do you have any questions while we're trying to get this last slide show up? Anybody have any? Yes. Did your Pathfinders meet at the same time as you did? We didn't until last year. We always met on Wednesday and they met on Monday and it worked really good like that because then we could use the gym, they could use the gym. That's the problem I'm having. So we, just, we don't have access to a gym because that's where the pathfinders Well see that's what happened to uh, that's what happened last year. They decided everybody was going to meet on Wednesday because they, they also have what they call family night out and they have a meal 
And so the pathfinders have the gym, so the venturers had to move to the church, which isn't as much fun for them. It's not as easy for the counselors. But what our pathfinder club does, we let them come over at 7:30 when they're done, because we're all in our you know our rooms in the gym. They let them come over at 7:30 and play, so they still get that play time in. But it does complicate things when everybody's there on the same night. It did make it a lot harder, and um, yeah, but. So did somebody else have a question? Advent Source. We ordered them from Advent Source. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw that you have, so when they outgrow them, you take them back? Well, we bought, we purchased them and then we rent them for $5 a piece per year. Oh. So, yeah. And I was telling them um, that that's, that's really a good idea. But if your club's short on money, you don't have to do that. You know, you can just send them to, you don't have to even order them from Advent Source when you're first getting started. They could just go somewhere inexpensive, Rainbow. like. Have the blue shirts on the do they? Yeah. Some, you know, or Target, or like she said, and just while, pe while your club's getting started, because when new clubs are starting, it's hard to have money for all of that. Okay, I think he's got me going here. So the kids, they, they would, this was the practice that we would do for them. We would line them up in the gym on Sabbath, because if you line them up in the hallway, you know, on Sabbath, ooh, they're noisy and there's people, you know, trying to walk through. So we'd take them in the gym and would line them all up in the gym, and then we would march them in, you know, right before time to go in. But this was them practicing on the stage. And you know, sometimes when they practice, they're silly and you think, oh my, don't worry about it. They never act like that when you're, they're up front at church and everybody's in the audience. They always behave themselves. And this was their little, um, this is the Easter egg hunt thing that they loved. It's amazing how fast kids grow. I'm looking and thinking, wow, these kids are two years older now and they're so much bigger. <laughs> and then here's the actual programs. We would have the kids standing there passing them out. And this was investiture. And that's what I was telling you about how I laid the things out on the table. It made it easy for you because you just unclipped them and you could just hand them right out. And this is the setup before. And these are, we would have the kids hold these. We would always put that up at um, every worship and we would let different children hold those, the pledge and the law and they loved that and hold the Bible. Where do you get the flags? At Advent Source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, the little class flags? Those were there when I came. I don't know where those came from. I think Jamie DeLay made them. She's here teaching something. You could ask her. She might make you a set. Yeah, yeah. No, the big, the big pledge in law you can get from Advent Source, but those, Jamie and Mike made those, I think. Oh, and remind me to give you the shirt man's name, Carl Bartlett. He does the t-shirts for a very inexpensive price, and he does an awesome job. Yes, uh-huh, the t-shirts. And, and, and what we do in the t-shirts, you recommend it as well. We do it for the new cast. Well, yeah, you probably could if, if he can get that logo if the logo's available. I, it should be because they're supposed to be available, she said, the 1st of September. What was the lady's name? Um, his name is Carl Bartlett, B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T. -T. Does he have a webpage or anything? Uh, he does, but it's a Abilene Products, but I don't really know how he spells that. But his, his um, phone number is 423. 883-2558. So 423-883-2558.
Where's the thing again? Like, Cara Bartlett. So let me ask, um, do you know if he's doing this? Would he have the template he already? He already has all the Venture Club yeah. templates. But he doesn't have... He, fell off, you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so anyhow, and the kids look so nice when they're up there. You can use the same kind of way for a Venture Club Sabbath and investiture, but they look so nice. And I'll tell you what, people see your kids up there and you might just start getting more support for your club than you know what to do with. And remember your coordinators. How many of you are in District 2? Okay, then Carl and I are your coordinators for District 2. So call me anytime. My name, my number, our number's on that sheet. Call us because we'll be glad to come to your investiture and help you. We'll come to your club night, you know, whatever you need. Any, or if you just need some, somebody to listen, whatever you need, just call us. We'll be glad to help you. Those are the little packets I made up I was telling you about. Just something simple. It didn't have to be fancy. Just something so they know. And one year I did little bags like that. Yes. So do we start with the burgundy um, handkerchief? Yeah, the ba it's going to stay burgundy. The only thing that's changing is the patch. But so all the little eager, the little oh, yeah, eager beavers and little lambs, all of them are going with the same, the same um, maroon. Yep. Yep. Oh, and at your investiture, for your helping hands, have your Pathfinder director or maybe one of the older Pathfinder kids come and welcome them. Have your helping hands sit on the stage and let the Pathfinder director welcome them to Pathfinders. It makes a big, big difference. Those kids right there I had since Eager Beavers, now they're all my explorers and helping hands. They're like, yeah, that's my little boy right there by the way. <laughs> so, and this is kind of, this was one of the year-end parties that we had one time. Just kind of give you an idea of, we rented all these blow-ups. Does anybody have any, and we had a table set up so you had to come in and pass your uniform over. Does anybody have any other questions or anything? What we do is we just have them come sit up on the stage and we have the, direct, the Pathfinder director or somebody come welcome them in and then they give them a little card welcoming them to um, Pathfinders. We had thought about doing the Pathfinder Bibles for them, but we, like I said, we had some pretty big numbers and that, so we didn't, you know, because it was kind of expensive. So you can cook at the end of the year? Yes, um, at our investiture, what yep. What church did, which I thought was really nice, is they changed their, um, their their, um, sash. Their sash. Not their sash, their scarf. Their scarf. Their scarf. Oh. They changed their scarf from the adventurer's scarf and they gave them the Pathfinder scarf. Oh, that's a neat idea. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice idea. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. Yeah. So, anybody else have? Yes. So, you know, our club is basically starting from ground zero. Mm -hmm. um, have, have you had any um, help in terms of? naming a club well hmm you mean like give it like you mean like pathfinders have <laughs> names you mean to name your adventure club with the name huh that's what we did our adventures are the beacon i mean our pathfinders are the beacon we were like what is something that would be littler like not a beacon but something littler and we're like we're fireflies so now we're the fireflies well that's a neat idea Yeah. So we took we took a theme off of the Pathfinders. Okay. okay. We don't have the Pathfinder Club either. <laughs> oh wow. Anything that we did like we're like for us the Pathfinders are the Falcons, and there's so now we're Falcons Junior. And we just changed it this year. But as far as for the conference, they just have your church name. So it's name of oh, your club, club that your church out. votes on it and approves it. Just think something that you can that be fun, but that you can base something spiritual on. We also have a little firefly stuffed animal that's going to go on. Oh, year. that's cute. And we have a little falcon. Yeah, baby falcon. That's a very neat idea. You can also find a suit. I found a falcon suit. 
They can have an adult wear. Oh. And so because all of our three clubs, our, our um, master guides, our pathfinders, and our adventurers are all falcons, it, we're going to divide the club between all three clubs. Oh. And we're going to get a full-size falcon where we can take them to camps and we can... Oh, that's... That's we share, really... We share no, between the clubs. Oh, that's a mascot. Wow. And parents give us suggestions and see how many of show up this time. And call us if you need anything. Well, you know, you, you can come look at any of my stuff. I'll come help you. Anything I can do. Anybody can call me. Any of you that want any information, I'll send you an email. If I could get somebody's, once I, un, once I un, get this thing off, I might could get people's um, flash drives in there. But thank you so much for coming. And please call. Anything we can do, we're happy to help you. And don't ever get discouraged because you, the Lord is using you. And it's a wonderful, I mean, it's a wonderful thing for kids. And they need it. So, yes. On Uh-huh. Yeah, yes, you can do that. Yep. So if you only have those can represent the actual staff that's teaching the class, let's say you just don't have a class for that activity, you can do without the candle, right? Yes, if you don't have any kids in that class, you could. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. teachers can light the candle that they're teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some people put that into, um, like you can, you can do induction with your path, your Venture Club Sabbath if you need to. However, you know you choose to do that. That's what we did. We always kind of made it part of our Venture Club Sabbath. Do you have We're, program templates that you use for your club? The order, how should go? I have this. Oh no. Um, you mean what I said? Oh. Um, I don't have anything on on that. You can go into the book. Pam had one for Pathfinders. They, what you say. They give you suggestions in the manual, but you can do it however you want. Yeah, you can. Last year, they asked me to make some sort of rock that they stack uh -huh. up and that they put the name tag of the child on the rock. Yeah. And then, That's just a suggestion. Yeah. You can, you can we, do a creative way. You know, you come up with your own creative way. And a lot of people, too, if you have a big club, have so many people you've got to deal with. You just do the ones. They were in it last year. You only do the new ones. Right, yeah. So you only do the induction for the new kids, not the ones that were in it already. Because they're already been inducted in the ventures. Because they're already in there. And do you give them scarf, hat, everything at the same time? Just, they just light their candle. Um, the kids or the staff? Well, the, the staff lights the children's candles. But what you say, it can either be something you write yourself, or you can look in the book and um, choose something that the book suggests, but yeah. Yeah, you could just light their flashlight. <laughs> the little ones, and it, you have to be careful with the candles. Or, or I would use a flashlight because the floor, even with the Pathfinders, we put tarps down because our director had to scrape the floor one time when they went all the way around the gym because the candles leaked even with older yeah. kids. So, you know, or, or use it, buy the little candles, like the ones in the lanterns that you just hit the switch and turn on. Yeah. You know, they have them. And we use the little LEDs. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can get those really cheap. Yeah. Very, yeah. Catch those you get in the dollar store. two for a dollar sometimes. Oh, I think I bought a whole book bag of like 50 for $10. Wow. That was really good. Well, I wish you guys luck. And remember, my number's on there. Call me. I'll help you with anything I can. Thank you so much for coming. There's one more important thing I wanted to add, and that's when you have an um, activity. Be sure that you send an activity sheet home. Have an activity sheet ready to send home with the families so they'll know all the details. And also, for your help, what you'll need a sign-up sheet so you know how many people are coming and if there's a price involved you'll know who's paid and who hasn't paid so your treasurer will know who to collect more money from and um, that's just something that we did on every single activity we we ever had and you know like the one for a fall outing tell what what it is the date the time what the cost is where what food to bring what kind of maze it's going to be if you're going to a corn maze and then your sign up and your numbers attending. It will help you immensely. Thanks.